Prices will happen. The biggest fiscal stimulus we have ever seen. And that'll solve the problem. A division that some have blamed for the company's financial troubles. Peter's saying every day, we could have never seen this coming. This was a shock. And Dow and DuPont changing plans of their breakup. The two companies just finalized their merger to These losses will be greater than they would have otherwise. Uh, 100,000 plus employees that built this company leave every day. And if they... Dramatic decline in the dollar a dramatic increase in interest rates, significant fueling of inflation, a very, very deep recession and possibly depression. Ultimately, there is going to be a price all around the world to be paid for this. And the longer it continues, the bigger that price is going to be. Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Demirer. Today, I will be talking about the regulations in fintech, what it does to the companies, the startups and fintech industry, and what solutions could be applied to eliminate those problems. Now, first of all, how did fintech become a necessity in the industry? With the loan demands that small to medium enterprises and consumers increased over time, banks became more hesitant in satisfying these needs. And in addition to this problem, young consumers, millennials, who are exposed to technology at a younger age, became more in need in the financial institution, in the financial services, for faster and more convenient services. Now, with the increasing demand for better, faster services, heads have been turned to fintech globally. And as you can see from this chart, the investment in global fintech financing activity in different markets such as the United States, Europe, and Asia Pacific has been increasing rapidly, which shows that the concept is needed in the financial services. Now, after an introduction of fintech on a global scale, I want to focus specifically on the United States market. 101 fintech startups and investors had been asked the top challenges in the fintech industry. The thing that happened in fintech is that with the new innovations that helped financial services to be faster and better, there were a lot of regulations that stopped the innovation pace of these fintech startups. 43% um, of these startups and investors that had been asked what the top challenges are, argued that the regulations are the biggest problem, followed by companies' reluctance to adopt new technologies. Now this could be because people do not know what to expect from fintech and its services or the traditional banking systems, the traditional banks not wanting to adopt technologies that they are not aware of, which could be understood. It is a problem if such applications, such new services are adopted and are not providing as good comeba comebacks as the, the previous services that they had been providing. Changing cons consum consumer behavior. Again, consumer, although millennials and young customers, young consumers are in the market, they also do not know what to expect from these services and what fintech could do for them on a daily basis. Therefore, 18% of the fintech startups and investors believe that this is a major problem. And access to funding, as this is, an emerging market, the access to funding is way harder compared to those traditional banks and other technologies, other firms. Now, FinTech covers a variety of fields. As you can see, some of these are lending operations, payment, digital currency, robo-advisory, and wealth management. One problem, though, is that the most regulations in the field is where the traditional banks and fintech companies are overlapped. Again, some people argue that this is because the traditional banks do not believe that fintech should be able to have the share on the market that uh, traditional banks used to have. And some believe that 
since this is an emerging market, there are a lot of question marks that had to be regulated. The problem with United States regulations on the fintech industry is that the regulations are way more in the United States compared to other markets such as Europe, the United Kingdom, European Union, and some other countries. Now this, as you can see, this is a problem because it limits the innovation pace of the U.S. firms. And the other problem is that there are some suggestions on which business model to follow, but these models are essentially based on the traditional banking methods, which does not, does not fall into the same pattern as the fintech and what it wants to do in the market. Under the spotlight of these problems, my first proposal is that separating the regulation between traditional banking system and fintech. Now, first of all, if such thing is done by a board that could be formed, this would allow those authorities to set a certain business model or different various business models that fintech startups could follow, which would help them to know what they are doing once they want to start a company in the fintech industry. This would allow them to grow faster, knowing where to invest and knowing what to do in terms of operations. And if this, if this happens, one other thing that could be beneficial for both traditional banking system and fintech is that the areas where the traditional banks and fintech firms overlap, regulations could be more solid where both sides know what to expect and knows what to do better. Proposal 2 suggests that the authority that oversees fintech industry could work with other markets and the authorities in those markets to have a common ground where both domestic firms in the United States and international firms could work this under the same regulations, just like the concept of European Union, having the same regulations, working under the same rules, and this could help both domestic firms to um, work internationally and international firms being welcome in the United States market, allowing the industry to grow at a faster pace. Now, we also know that FinTech is paving the way for the, for the financial system, for the monetary policies, for the monetary uh, operations to be digitized. If such, um, if such union is formed between authorities, in the United States and other countries, the global adoption of digitization of money could be faster. And this is essential for both the US economy and global economy. Proposal three, acknowledging fintech firms as global or international firms. Now we know that companies, once they are formed, they are regulated under the country that they are formed. Well, since fintech is a service that is globally used, acknowledging fintech firms as global or international firms could allow the regulations to be limited, less limited, and less regulated, which would allow them to grow faster, to operate internationally, and it would help the globalization to be faster. Now, setbacks on this said proposal. The United States, just like other countries, are built on, the, on, on, on structures, on financial structures, that has been going on for, for a long time, a long period of time. But the problem with these financial structures is that those structures are becoming obsolete and it has to be changed, just like anything else. It always has to change, adapt to new technologies and needs and demands of the consumer. So the setback is that traditional banks that had been following those old structures could struggle to change and to adapt to new technologies and methods. Now the solution to these possible setbacks is that if such authority is formed, especially in the United States, this authority or union if possible could have a committee where they could, where they could, trans, uh, they could have a transformation consultancy to the traditional banks which would allow them to adopt technologies easier 
and this could help save a lot of money because if the banks, traditional firms, try to do this on their own, they could operate or do something the wrong way, which would down the free or mobile application. Now, 